this video is I'd like to explain, at least to you guys, um, what a regular polygon is going to go through. All right? And to do this, what I'm going to use, Sierra, is I'll start off with a triangle. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you guys were first introduced to triangles, there was three types of triangles that you kind of talked about. All right? The first type of triangle, or it didn't have to be first, but one of them was what we call an equilateral triangle, right? Where you had two sides, or all three sides of the triangle were equal to each other. Then, we also talked about an isosceles triangle, where only two of your side lengths are equal to each other, or equal in measure. And then, there's what we call the scaling triangle, where all three sides are different, right? Now, if you guys look at these triangles, all right? When we're talking about an equilateral triangle, all the side lengths are equal, Megan, but what else is equal? Exactly. Yes, Nick? The measures. the measures of the angles are also all equal in measure. Right? So if I asked you, if I, you know, if I was looking at this, and I said, all right, we know that a triangle is 180 degrees. If all three of these are equal in measure, if I just wanted to find the measure of one of those angles, what would I have to do to 180? I could take 180 and yes? Divide it by three. Divide it by three, right? Because these are all equal in measure. So I could take 180 and divide it by three. And therefore, that's going to tell me that each one of these angles is 60 degrees. Correct? Now, when you're talking about an isosceles, they only have two angles are equal in measure. So if we divide by three, that's not going to work because only two of the angles are, are the same measurement. Yes, Nick? Yeah, it, it gets a little, we'll talk more about how to do that. We're not, I'm not really interested in how to find this. Uh, we're actually more interested just in this. So we'll learn about what to do with isosceles. Um, but then here, you guys can obviously see here, we have an obtuse and an acute. So that's not going to work at all, right? You can't just divide 180 divide by 3. You're not going to get an obtuse angle. So what we call, ladies and gentlemen, a regular polygon is when we have, oh, you got that one down? So a regular polygon is when you have equal measure for the angles, and you have equal measure for the sides. What that means is all the side lengths are equal in measure. All of the angles are equal in measure. OK? Um, and the next one, guys, we can look at, you know, it'd be the same thing. Let's, so let's now go to quadrilaterals, right? The, our most famous quadrilateral, quadrilateral um, when we have all sides are equal and all lengths are the same, we call this a what? Square. Right. And then do we know that a square has all equal sides and four angles that are all the same? Yeah. Right? And therefore, we know that a quadrilateral adds up to 360. But if I wanted to find the measure of my individual angle, Right? I could do what? I'd have to divide 360 by what? Four. Four. Now, this one actually works because even with a rectangle, the, even with a rectangle, ladies and gentlemen, you're equal, your sides are all equal. All right? But however, here you can see that these are not equal, right? So you can't just take 360 divided by four. However, ladies and gentlemen, all I want you really to understand with this, and when we're talking about regular, is to notice that regular have to have the same measurement for the angles and same measurement for the side lengths. So why, how are we going to use this? All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you guys to notice, notice I take 180, or the sum, right? What I'm doing is I'm taking the sum, and I'm dividing it by 3. 3 represents what? What is 3 the number of? How many sides I have? What about 4? What is 4 the representation of? Sides. And that gives me what each individual angle is. So if I want to find out what is the individual angle of a, you know, um, we know that the sum, right? 
the sum of all the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180 degrees, correct? The sum of all the interior angles, n minus 2 times 180, right? That was the problem I kind of like last did. However, what if I just want to find the measurement of one individual angle? Well, if you guys look at it, what I do, since they are regular, this only works when they're regular. You can't do this with a scaling triangle. Or you can't do this when, they, when, not all the measure, or when not all the angles are equal in measure. But what you do is you take the sum, which is n minus 2 times 180, right? n minus 2 times 180, and then we divide it by what? What am I dividing it by? What do 3 and 4 represent? What do 3 and 4 represent? Not the angle, the number of sides. And what letter in here represents number of sides? What number in here? N. So I'll go and re-explain one more time, but you guys are really going to want to have to make sure you have this written down there. The sum of all the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180. If I say, what is the sum of all the angles of a, um, of a 13 gon? You do 13 minus 2 times 180. But if I say, what is the measure of, all the in, of an individual angle of a 13 gon? I would say 13 minus 2 times 180, then divide it by 13. All right. So you have to find the sum and then divide it by the number of sides. That's going to give you the individual angle. All right. So you're going to want to make sure you guys have both of those uh, formulas.